I'm way, yes, I am also an arts education um, person, educator, way back, um, and still yay. am. And I, uh, yay, yeah, we've got to stick together. <laughs> and, I, and I know um, you have to be an exceptional person to work within that environment. So has that experience change, changed your views on life and healing? Oh, absolutely. And, um, you know, talking about preconceptions or, or, or humanity in general and just thinking of where we're at in our current <laughs> quote unquote, yeah. situation with, um, right. you know, having to interact and confront people who are different than us or have different beliefs. You know, this idea that, well, I'm, you know, if I'm going into this place, these are criminals, you know, like, right there's anticipation there but what I learned I, I learned I think so much from that being that it changed my understanding of what community is and what humanity is and that's a big kind of statement that mm-hmm. you know these are these are people who um, ended up in a situation where what it comes down to is we're all just trying to survive and why they're there uh, somehow conflicted with, um, I guess the, the standards of law that, you know, prohibit certain ways of survival in life. And so what I found with working with these people is, you know, they've been, their humanity has been removed. They've been kind of stripped down to just being a number, being a case file, being, uh, an orange jumpsuit. So, you know, they were, they craved any type of personal expression or they're, you know, so desperate for a sense of autonomy and a sense of self. But mm-hmm. at the same time, that's what we're all trying to do anyway, even on the outside of that. So it just became very starkly more clear. And so art making in a art therapy context in these institutions of incarceration are super empowering, especially when you're disempowered and have any sense of free will removed from, from, yeah. from yourself, basically. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a pretty powerful uh, tool to give to give somebody who feels like their power has mm-hmm. been taken away. Right. Um, and once right. some, so once someone has been in treatment, um, how do they continue healing on their own? Mm-hmm. I think, you know, during the therapeutic process, mm-hmm. um, really as an art therapist, I see my clients as co-collaborators. It's their life. They should be an active participant in figuring out how to how to figure this out and how to continue um, long after therapy is done. So I will work uh, with clients based on what their treatment goals are, establishing those. Those have to be measurable. They have to be obtainable. You know, so we're checking in. So throughout the sessions, we're we're actively building resilience. We're actively building uh, problem solving. Uh, So then when they are in their lives outside of therapy and after therapy is terminated, that they're able to do that. So I think, you know, the therapeutic process helps uh, provide resources and I I, I use the word resiliency, but being able to just even someone to sit with discomfort, you know, we want to, we want to avoid discomfort. Like why would we want to feel um, anxiety or, or embarrassment, right? But like yeah. what to do and how to cope with that. So I think building up resources and different coping skills uh, throughout that therapeutic journey so they can, um, again, take that into their everyday life. It's very simple, but, you know, in theory, but in practice, it takes um, a lot of patience and a lot of a lot of, yeah, and um, I'm going to kind of switch uh, a question around yeah. here. Um, um, you know, for somebody who's interested in exploring how art therapy can help, you know, is it required that a person is artistic in any way to benefit from no, the therapy? No, no, no. Okay. No, not at all. Like I would, you know, I would counter that question. Well, would you have to be good at, you know, t- you know, English, <laughs> taking yeah. an English class to be good at talk therapy? No, yeah. like, um. I, I would say 90, 98 of the percent of the people that I work with don't have formal artistic training. And that's, 
you know, I like when I when I'm teaching as well. Like if I'm teaching a draw drawing one class, like a beginner's class, students arrive just like anxious, like they should already know how to draw. And I'm like, no, 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 that's why you're here. So yeah. starting that fresh slate of like, look, let's explore, let's play. Like it's it's not just drawing a still life and having it be photorealistic, but let's tap into those, like I referenced earlier, you know, what would your five-year-old self think if I gave you free reign over a big piece of paper um, yeah. and, and really learning how to, how to explore and practice curiosity and really it's letting go of those judgments. Like I said, the, the toxic dichotomies of I'm good, this is bad. I'm yeah. not talented or artistic. And so it's really kind of about using art making to break down those barriers of self-judgment. And I'm going to come back to sort of this, this pandemic that we're in right now. And yeah. um, Yeah. And as an art therapist, have you found that, that you are being more creative yourself or has your own artistic self changed during these times of isolation or do you just sort of um, sit and contemplate life? as well as work all, yeah yeah I think of all of the above I I know my my personal art making practice mm-hmm. has shifted because I think in a way I'm in self-preservation mode um you know I'm still making something every day but I my focus I feel it softened um I think creativity like as an educator and as an art therapist like I I've had to learn how to be more creative and how I do my work um for example a lot of the work that i'm doing with art therapy has been virtual and so how do you work with mm-hmm. someone who doesn't have who who isn't in your proximity that you're dealing with over with the screen and all they have is a piece of paper and a pen you know right. there's no yeah. fancy art studio there's no fancy supplies i've really yeah. enjoyed that that's been really really fun um yeah. and i think that I know as an artist, I, I'm I'm just like any other artist, like, oh, I'm not making enough or I'm not doing something that's exciting. But the fact that I'm, you know, poking at it, I'm consistently like, well, I'm staying engaged. I'm writing a little bit. I'm just working in a sketchbook. You know, like, again, that has to be enough. Yeah, yeah. That it's feeding me. I know it's important to me, but I don't have to. It's, it's I'm, I'm in my own way of what, what success is or what is uh, productive. Yeah. And, and with what's toxic in, you know, this, this, the before, as I like to call it, the before, you know, yeah. before March, there's this busy sickness that we were all just running around. And, yes. Right. You know, and yeah. this all of a sudden, like screeching <clears throat> halt of, oh, I, I know for me, like it's forced me to sit with myself and contemplate myself and, you know, and again, yeah. that's challenging. Yeah. So it, I think, it, yeah, it's, it's very, it's very, uh, yeah, it's, I think that it gives us time to, to actually be with ourselves and to, yeah, it's very much, I think this whole thing, this whole pandemic is like art therapy, <laughs> right? right? It really it's is. a little chaotic and yes. there's a lot of unknowns and yeah. none of us know what to do right. but we're like just giving our best yeah. you know now i this is the question that's going to save the world here um, <laughs> yes, here I am. I'm um ready. are you ready for it okay sit yeah. down now <laughs> um, yes. um, can you give a personal example of say an exceptional healing through your art therapy in two minutes i can i can try um okay again i it's I, 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 I'm hesitant to say he, like healing is super subjective and that looks different for everybody. Right. But I will say um, the position that I, I'm actually going back in tonight is my first night back after uh, five months after, you know, with wow. the pandemic stuff. Um, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm excited. And nervous, of course, um, uh, into a shelter that I work at in St. Paul called Brittany's Place. And it's a shelter for um, commercially trafficked or solicited girls. Oh, gosh. So, right. Um, so you've got, you've got about one minute. Okay, I got one minute. So, 
this, so up until like probably the last session I worked with, um, I'd been working with this uh, young lady for months and she refused to participate. But the fact that I kept showing up and kept offering uh, her a space at the table, finally after nine months, she just without a word started making. <gasps> and wonderful. just that, you know, like I'm going to be consistent and show that you are still worthy of my time and attention. You are worthy of these art supplies. And she made the whole hour and a half. And it was, you know, it seems so small and insignificant. Yeah. But it's it's powerful. And I think I think that represents us today too. If we keep on showing up, if we keep on like, you know, who knows what will happen. Persevering. Oh, Anne, thank you so much for joining us on Yin Yoga Lifestyle today. I'm so 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 um so honored and appreciative and if you would like more information about Anne E Lawton you can visit a e l a w t o n dot com or email Anne can people email you um, absolutely yeah at l a w t o n a e at gmail dot com many thanks again Anne for being with us today on Yin Yoga Lifestyle what a treat thank you so much this thank you sweetie so much fun. And please don't forget to subscribe to yinyogalifestyle.com where you can find free yin yoga videos and you can join online yin yoga classes and receive your first class for free. Let's get you started on your your daily yin yoga routine today. It's that easy. Thank you for joining Yin Yoga Lifestyle, adding enlightenment, calm, balance, and creativity to your everyday life. I am your host, Colette Darville. Join us next time to continue our journey of balancing into a state of perfect harmony. Until then, this is Colette Darville reminding you to inhale so and exhale hum.